I knew that we had a lot of young players and we were un unproven in a lot of areas and we had a lot of work to do. And, but you don't know that until you, until you actually play games. To start the 2003 season, the Hurricanes met the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs in Shreveport for a nationally televised matchup. The trio of running back Frank Gore, quarterback Brock Berlin, and freshman Ryan Moore had a stellar performance in the 2003 season opener at Louisiana Tech. I mean, I had excellent block. I mean, I made a couple of moves, I mean, but the rest of I mean, all that credit goes to my teammates. I mean, they had excellent block for me. I just saw the holes and I just hit them and just ran for a touchdown. It was Antrell Roll who provided the fireworks, returning a punt 66 yards for a touchdown. The Canes racked up 192 yards on the ground while holding the Bulldogs to just 92 in this lopsided victory. Roll topped off the game with a 30-yard interception return, adding a touchdown to the Canes' 48-9 victory. Ryan Moore was uh, coming in, hopefully one of our big-time players, big playmakers, and uh, with him getting the touchdown, you could see glimpses of what uh, what we'd hoped for. And, of course, Brock Berlin, going back home, that's his hometown, Shreveport, Louisiana. A lot of pressure on him, first start for the University of Miami and for him to get that touchdown. I think it, I think it really relaxed him and really settled him in and uh, got him ready for a great season. It was exciting, you know. It was exciting. You know, I wish we could have done a few more things better. You know, obviously we'll be able to learn from mistakes, you know. But I just, you know, I thank God that I was able to get out there and, and be able to play again. The Miami-Florida rivalry was hotter than ever in this year's matchup. Great to see Devin Hester, a young player, to, to have the type of test that he had in that game and really ignite our football team. Again, we had a lot of work to do after that, but, uh, but uh, certainly a great return. Devin Hester took the opening kickoff 97 yards for a touchdown, but the Hurricanes managed only three more points for the half. Florida's offense was clicking on all cylinders, rolling off 19 points to lead at halftime. You got like this all half, guys. You got like this all half. Nothing to change. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Nothing change. Nothing change at all. Boys, boys, don't judge. Don't worry about the school board. Do the things you don't know how to do to win the football game. All we got to do is go out and execute the game plan that we're doing, okay? Protect the football. Move the chains. 
Move the chains, guys. Three yards, four yards, five yards. That's all we need. Move those sticks, and then we'll get our shots down the field later on, all right? Our defense went out and did a great job, got the ball back for us. And it wasn't quite as fast and crisp as maybe it looked, but it's very efficient. Quarterback Brock Berlin became a hurricane that night, leading his team to 28 unanswered points and maintaining their nation-leading 23-game home winning streak. When they called my pay, I was like, I, I gotta make something happen, this is the right time. And I just, I ran, I just ran hard, hard. And I kept, I kept pumping my feet in. And I, I broke the top of my score. Well, it was a great effort, and uh, we really were playing well on offense at the time. I think their defense was a little tired, and I knew that uh, if we executed, that we'd have a chance to score the touchdown. Obviously, we're going to use time, and uh, we're going to use every opportunity we have. We, our philosophy is we want to score the touchdown. We don't want to put the hands, the ball in the hands of a kicker, but, but we will if we have to. And uh, we felt like John Petty could hit it, but uh, without question, uh, Frank Gore's touchdown put a lot of relief on everybody's face. We'll remember this one, guys. We'll remember this one. He's a big play, uh, big play playmaker. He's uh, very explosive. Uh, he's got great hands. He's very athletic. Uh, he can run extremely well. And uh, he is that type of player that can take a short play, a short game, and make it into a long game. And that's what he has to do for us. Running back Frank Gore was the story against East Carolina as he racked up 120 yards rushing.
Hurricanes defense dominated East Carolina's offense, holding them to just 229 total yards. Miami's offense took advantage of its red zone attempts, going three for three from inside the 20. Miami's crushing defense held the Pirates to one field goal for the game, while their offense awoke late in the game and led UM to a decisive 38-3 victory. We start the Big East Conference next week in Boston, in Boston College. Hey, let's have a great week. Take care of yourself tonight. Great job. Great week. Uh, I think we did real good. You know, we caused some turnovers. We made plays, uh, scored a touchdown. So I think we, uh, we, we did good, and we, tr we did what we practiced. You know, we ran around, flew around, made tackles, and made plays. I think they enjoyed the crowd. I think they enjoyed uh, you know, the opportunity to play Boston College. It, uh, everybody talked about what a close game it was going to be. We, uh, the games we've had at Boston College, we, couldn't, we had trouble there, a tough place to play. And I think our players really thrived on that and took it personal that they wanted to really play well. The Hurricanes came into a chilly Boston September, protecting 13 straight victories over the Eagles and facing the ghosts of narrow victories in the last four trips to Alumni Stadium. Early in the second quarter, Sean Taylor returned an interception 67 yards for a touchdown. It was Miami's seventh return for a touchdown in four games this season. The Kings offense added 10 more points to take the lead into halftime. By the end of the game, Miami walked out of Alumni Stadium with a dominating victory in its Big East opener. Which team is the most physical team out there? Hey, no doubt about it, guys. You guys, you guys did what you were asked to do. You were physical. You dominated the game. I, I hope you see what I see. I see some tonight from defense. I see it from, from our special teams. I see a lot of great individuals on offense. I don't see a great offensive team yet. We got some growing we got to do, guys. I don't see that on offense yet. I see some great individual efforts, some great individual plays. Now we've got to grow. We've got to grow. Get the fellas. It's out there. It's out there. We just got to take over credit. All those little things, guys. Make sure. Let's press, it, press, it, press. It. Let's put all these guys. Let's make sure. Let's give great effort. Let's give great effort. Let's play fast. Let's play fast. Let's give great effort. Let's play smart. Let's play smart. And let's make sure, man. What are they going to say about you after this game's over? I'm not even talking about a national televised audience. I'm not talking about people all over America. What are they going to say? What are the people that really care about you? What are they going to say? West Virginia rolled into the Orange Bowl looking to put an end to the Canes 24 game home winning streak in a nationally televised Thursday night contest.
The early story was Frank Gore. He sustained another heartbreaking end to a season. It's such a tough year for Frank, and now uh, to have, have that happen again, while Frank was having an outstanding season. He knows now what he has to do. It's not new to him. He's done it before, and now he's going to have to do it again and uh, with, with new diligence. And uh, I was certainly very, just, just very distraught for, for Frank Gore. West Virginia's Quincy Wilson tried to steal one for his team at the OB as he took a screen pass for a bruising 33-yard touchdown with two minutes left in the game. The Hurricanes needed a fourth and 13 completion from their own 25-yard line to keep the drive alive. They turned to tight end Kellen Winslow. It was just one-on-one, -on -one and uh, I made a move on him and went up and got it. Freshman kicker John Petty booted the game-winning field goal and preserved the nation-leading home winning streak. We didn't give up, we didn't quit, we kept the fight to the end. And then uh, also uh, the, the, the memorable play, of course, was the, uh, the fourth down and 13, where the game, the season's on the line and uh, protection was there. Uh, Brock Berlin, a great throw to uh, Kellen Winslow, one of the, the finest passes and catches I believe I've ever seen. Uh, I was kind of thinking back to Fiesta Bowl when they did the same exact thing to Todd, used up timeouts and everything. I don't know, just relaxing, listening to the music, uh, just kind of just doing what we do every day, you know? Hey, if you don't give up, guys, you can make some good things happen. You didn't give up tonight. You stayed with it, you stayed with it, you stayed with it. Hey, did we play great? No, we didn't play great. We dodged the bullet? Yeah, we dodged the bullet. But we won, guys. Be happy when you win, guys. Be happy when you win. I think they took it very personally that we were ranked number two in the country, playing the number five team in the country, and and uh, predicted to lose that game. And and honestly, I think they got the feeling around around even our faithful fans that uh, that maybe there wasn't a lot of positive vibrations going into Tallahassee. I think we handled the rain and the conditions very very well. The undefeated Hurricanes blew into Tallahassee without leading rusher Frank Gore and as an underdog for just the second time in 38 games. This year's meeting marked the first matchup with both teams in the top five since 1993.
I knew with the conditions the way they were, there probably would not be a lot of, a lot of touchdowns scored. We were relegated to field goals. We did a good job for the most part, hit our field goals. But when I saw that touchdown, I knew that could be a defining blow in the game. Sean Taylor's 50-yard touchdown took the Hurricanes into halftime with a comfortable lead. I just waited patiently, like uh, Coach Shaw told me all week. Uh, it cleared open. When I was running to the goal line, I don't even think they knew I had the ball, so I, I got it a little bit too clean, but uh, everything ran smooth. Offensive line blocked and just took it to the house. It was just a tremendous effort by our offensive line. It really stepped up the best performance of the year by our offensive linemen. A tremendous job by them, and Jared Payton did just an outstanding job of, of making the tough runs and and we really, as a goal, our team said we've got to run the football against Florida State. And I asked them, do you know how tough that is? Because we've had great backs that did not have a lot of yardage against Florida State. And we didn't ask him to be a superhero. We just asked him to hit the holes, and that's all he did. I mean, he had a great day, hit the holes we gave him, and, and he was running hard. He protected the ball well, and uh, you can't say enough about him. He stepped up to the occasion, and just like uh, great Miami players does, and, and he's just the next in line. Oh, everyone knew that JP would step it up. You know, I mean, we've seen him in practice, and we've seen him in other games, and he's got the potential and the ability to do what any other back at UM has ever done. Hurricane ground game dominated in the mud, going for 131 yards on 34 carries, while the defense halted the Seminole rushing attack, holding them to just 61 yards on 37 carries. When the last seconds ticked off the clock, Miami walked off the field with four straight wins against Florida State and the coveted Florida Cup. Well, I tell you, there were, there were so many things that happened early in that first drive. It's almost like an like a, a entire game or a season of things. To, you know, we have the two penalties to allow them to have a first down. We have uh, we muff we fumble a punt. We have uh, we have a, a personal foul to allow them have, to have a first down. So there's so many things that allowed them to score a touchdown, and I think it was a wake up call. The Temple Owls came into the Orange Bowl and jumped to a 7-0 lead in their first possession. But the talented Hurricane defense clamped down, allowing only 21 yards through the air.
Defensively, uh, had a good, uh, good uh, adjustments at halftime. Randy Shannon did a great job. Came out totally dominant defense in the in the second half, and then a great, uh, great job. Uh, Don Solinger on our special teams designing the fake punt. D.J. Williams is flawlessly executed. I was just getting better. And uh, just talking with Eric Winston, uh, I know Eric had made the same statement. I asked him, what do you try to do each week? He said, Coach, I just try to get better. And that's where I see us right now. We are improving. We are getting better as a football team. We get along so well that when we're in the huddle, we laugh and joke around and we say, no, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. And with those guys running the ball, like, I mean, blocking like that, it so, makes it so much easier just to run the ball. Jarrett Payton and Jason Gathers each contributed two touchdowns to the game. Tyrone Moss, Kevin Everett, and linebacker DJ Williams also got involved in the TD frenzy, adding one apiece. Miami's offense overpowered the Owls, rolling up 52 points by game's end. Well, there was a lot of hype about the Virginia Tech game. Our preparations were good. The turnovers and things really took us out of the game, but uh, we felt good about our preparations. Well, we knew it was going to be a tough atmosphere. I don't think the atmosphere had that much to do with it. I think, again, I think our own, our own errors really did more to, to cost us the game than the atmosphere. This is just a tough guy. This is a man kind of game. This is a be a man type night. Be a man type night. That's what we got to do, guys. Let's be relentless. Hey, let's keep punching. Let's keep punching. Nobody flinches. Nobody <coughs> flinches. Keep punching. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Don't worry about nothing. There's going to be some ups and downs. There's going to be some good, some bad things happen. Let's play through it all. Let's play through it all. Let's stay tight. Let's stay tight. Let's stay together. Hey, let's have some fun. Let's focus. Focus. Hey, let's, let's work to win each play. Dominate each play. Win each play. Just win one play at a time. Right? And let's play fast, guys. It's going to be hot. It's humid out there. They're not used to this, guys. They have to practice this. This is to our advantage. We've got to use it to our advantage. In and out of the huddle. On and off the sidelines, breaking the huddle, attack, 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 attack. Coming into Blacksburg, the Hurricanes hadn't lost a league play since a loss to the Hokies in 1999. Hurricane offense struggled throughout the game, losing three interceptions and one of seven fumbles. Virginia Tech took advantage of an early turnover and led it to half 10-0. In the second half, Miami sputtered, and the Hokies used their big play defense to turn three turnovers into 21 points and capitalized on a turnover on downs to run up a 31-0 lead. Late in the game, Miami converted one of four chances in the red zone for their only score. The 31-7 loss was Coach Larry Coker's second in 33 games as Miami's head coach. Well, you know, in a game like that, of course, it, and when it was a lopsided score, it really it was a, a little bit of an aberration and, and uh, somewhat of a fluke from the standpoint of uh, the score being really not in, not indicative. Uh, we, we dropped the pass on the fake, uh, fake field goal, which would have scored for us. I probably would have been a 10-7 game at half. But more than the turnovers, the turnovers 
certainly just just cost us, but the, more than the turnovers, the way the turnovers happen, two back for touchdowns and one set up a touchdown. So really, 21 points uh, came off turnovers. Defensively, we played pretty well. They really had very little yardage other than off the turnovers. You know, just turnovers will kill you. you can uh, when you have a lot of turnovers. You know, you see the puts points on the board of the other teams. So for us, you know, we just got to stop making mistakes, come out here, and we need to focus on what we have to do for the next four games and, and uh, win all these next four games and not worry about this. It's, this is in the past now, so. We've kind of been doing it all season, you know, good enough to get down there, not really good enough to get in. That's how it's been. And, I mean, you know, sooner or later we've got to grow up and we've got to put it in. But, uh, you know, turnovers, like you said, turnovers in bad field position will kill you every time. Let's just one second. Before we went out, we talked about being a man, didn't we? We're really going to have to be a man now, guys. We're really going to test your manhood right now. We're going to have to be men tonight, tomorrow, and next week, so on, guys. It's real simple, man. Turnovers, you can't win with turnovers, and you can't win with poor field position. Turnovers and field position. Guys, the things we're doing wrong, we can correct. We probably, if we played well enough defensively, probably win the football game. But have 200 yards total offense. We didn't re represent as well offensively as we need to represent. We're doing <coughs> football, don't we know that. We know that. But man, we win as a football team, we lose as a football team. Now, it's going to be up to us to get our act back together. And all we think about after tomorrow is Tennessee, guys. Tennessee, that's all we can worry about. We can't change anything that happened tonight. If we can correct it, all we can worry about is Tennessee. It's all about being physical. Let's press these guys, guys. Not for, not for one quarter, not for a half. Four quarters, let's press it. Let's press it. Just make sure to press these guys. Stay focused. Not anything we need these guys. Let's make a statement today. Let's make a statement today. Let's make a statement today. Who we are. Let's make a statement today. You are dominant. Dominant, dominant. Tennessee came to South Florida looking for revenge after last year's domination by the Canes in Knoxville. On the line again, Miami's nation-leading 26-game home winning streak. I will take the, take the odds of him making that catch uh, every every down. He's, he's made it a thousand times in practice. We didn't make it this time. Just jump a little bit. Turnovers late in the game contributed to Miami's demise as the Kings were knocked out of the national championship picture for the first time in four years, losing two straight games for the first time since 1999. The Volunteers became the first visiting team to celebrate a victory at the Orange Bowl since Penn State did it in 1999. Tennessee won with just 170 yards of offense, 81 passing, and 89 rushing. It was the first time since 1997 that Miami failed to score a touchdown in a game, and the first time since 1984 the Hurricanes failed to score a touchdown at home. They're, you know, they're not used to losing, and, and which is good. We don't want to get used to losing. We don't like losing.
I knew it was a very important game, a game we, we needed to win uh, desperately, and uh, I felt very, very good that we were able to do it. Uh, against uh, Syracuse, I, I knew that I was going to play Tyrone Moss. Tyrone Moss was the difference in the game, if you had to point to one, one player. Being able to run the football, break tackles, score when, when uh, actually maybe we shouldn't score. We didn't have to throw the football in the red zone. We could obviously run and throw, and Tyrone gave us that opportunity. Syracuse took the lead into their locker room at halftime, but freshman Tyrone Moss had a breakout game, rushing 13 times for 91 yards and a touchdown. Miami snapped its losing streak and turned its focus to winning the Big East. The bottom line is winning because sometimes you're not going to have that great day. Sometimes you might have some turnovers and, and sometimes their defense is going to be good enough. What we have to do is win. So and, and you win the surest way. And the thing that we had to do was be efficient on offense. Just be efficient, not turn the ball over, and we give our defense a chance to win for us and our special teams. Offense, defense, you've had a great week. Practice fans, running around, you've been fizzling on offense. Let's do those things today. Carry it over today. Let's send these seniors out and let the all be sent out. Man, I don't want anybody here worried about making a mistake. I want you to fly around, have great energy, great strength, great power. You make, mis make a mistake, what do we say? Find them. Forget about it, drive on. Brock Berlin was back in the starting lineup as UM welcomed Rutgers to the Orange Bowl for Senior Day. Jarrett Payton went out with a bang in his final game in the Orange Bowl, rushing for 86 yards and a touchdown. The defense once again helped the offense, recording six sacks, three interceptions, and two blocked punts. After a slow 6-0 start, 
Kevin Everett and Jared Payton combined for three touchdowns, while Sean Taylor added another interception for a touchdown to ice the game. The Hurricanes were only one win away from a Big East championship and a spot in the BCS. Uh, I just think the offensive line took it uh, upon themselves to, you know, get some push off the line and uh, just made it easier for me and Tyrone and JG, the, um, Jason Gathers, just to, you know, make some plays. And uh, once everything started clicking, we came out there all, gu uh, all, uh, all guns blazing. It was crazy. It was good for the offense to spark things up. See the know that the defense is doing their job, special teams doing their job, and we're holding up our end of the bargain too. So and now everybody's I think on the same page. So it just gives us that more confidence going in next week. We have one more game left, and I mean it's for all the marbles of BCS birth, win the Big East. So it's definitely a good good win for us. Build as the Big East championship in the Steel City, a victory in Pittsburgh was Miami's final chance to win the league. Following a Pittsburgh touchdown, the Kings warmed up in the cold air of Heinz Field. Jarrett Payton and Tyrone Moss sparkled in the regular season finale, both rushing for over 100 yards. The Hurricane offense came together to score four touchdowns in a strong season finale. The UM defense subjugated Heisman Trophy candidate Larry Fitzgerald, holding him to just three catches while totaling nine sacks on the night. Man, let's stop real quick. 
Guys, I don't know that I've been proud of a bunch of coaches and <coughs> players. This, this was a great team win. Great team win. Talk about talent. We said we had talent. We knew we had talent. What did we talk about also? Will. 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 And your heart, guys. You played with your heart. You played with your heart. Great job. I think the offensive and defensive fronts were just dominant in that game and, and allowed us to run the ball well to get some big plays in the running game, a big play or, or two in the passing game, and then, of course, dominate uh, defensively. We didn't end up going to the national championship. That's, that's what our aspirations were. That's what our number one goal was. But, uh, you know, come out and win a Big East championship and kind of salvage what you could and do the best that you could with what the situation that you had, I think speaks volumes for this team, and uh, not just talent-wise, but, you know, our character. Yeah, number one, baby. You know what you Got to finish it strong, that's all. We got one more. One more on the OB. Yeah, let me see. Mel, you're well prepared for this thing. You're, you're, you're as well prepared as any team in the world has ever been prepared for a football game. We got a great crowd here tonight. A lot of canes here. Let's really feed off the crowd, feed off each other, celebrate together. The main thing, guys, is let's play hard, let's play fast, let's have fun. Let's go out in style. Miami and Florida State met in the Orange Bowl at Pro Player Stadium for the second of three encounters in 11 months. But after the initial disappointment, both teams geared up for another great rivalry game. Florida State jumped out to a 14-3 lead, but only took a slim 14-13 lead into halftime. Hey guys, let's make sure now this is our half. Second half, hey, let's play smart. Let's play smart. You're doing a great job. Hey, keep your rhythm up now. Keep your rhythm. In and out of the huddle. That's where they attack these guys, guys. We're going to wear them down, wear these guys down, but we got to keep the pressure on them. a UMFSU game without a missed field goal. Another wide right for Florida State in what could have been the game-winning kick. The Hurricanes secured the win with a gutsy fake punt call by Larry Coker late in the fourth quarter. Senior running back Jared Payton collected 131 yards on 22 carries and took home the Orange Bowl MVP award. You played your heart out as a team. You played your heart out as a team. That bunch over there played their heart out, too. You know that. You know that. You got a big heart, baby. You got a big heart. Congratulations, guys. Just a great, great finish. A great finish. A great finish. I'm proud of every one of you. Hey, let's make sure and take care of ourselves now. Let's take care of ourselves. And, man, let's enjoy this one. Let's enjoy this one. Last year, we lost the last game. This year, we won the last game. We're going to be winners all the way along. All right. Good job, man. Yeah.